Okay, uh, uh, shalom everyone and uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the class on, um, what is our course name? Ministry of the Evangelist, Teacher and Pastor. Okay. Uh, so Daniel Oliver is very concerned. He says, ma'am, as per the schedule, it's Pastor Paul Emmanuel <laughs> who has to take this course. Uh, yes, I'm in the right place at the right time. Uh, yes, Paul, Pastor Paul Emmanuel has to uh, take these classes, but he is on an emergency travel. So I'm filling in for his um, class only just for uh, this week and the following week. And then when he's back, uh, he will continue classes. Is that OK, Daniel? OK. Yes, happy seeing all of you. Um, it's, uh, it's great to see all of our in-person students. Joy to have you all back. Um, and also, I don't see any of uh, our online students, but uh, thank you for uh, joining in. Um, uh, and welcome to class. Also, welcome to our e-learning students. Uh, welcome to this fall semester 2024, okay? So like I said, Pastor Paul Emmanuel will teach this course, and he's been teaching this course. I'm just filling in for him for two weeks. So please uh, bear with me, and then he'll come back, and then he'll walk you through uh, this entire um, course, okay? Uh, before we begin, we'll uh, just pause for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, that... Um, you have redeemed us, you have purchased us with your precious blood. And it's not just a privilege that we enjoy, but it's also a responsibility that you've entrusted to us, God, that you have seen us as your children, as uh, heirs of God, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. And you have given us the keys of authority uh, to build your kingdom here on earth, to extend your kingdom here on earth, to represent you, God just as Jesus came and represented the Father. We thank you, God, that you've entrusted to us the kingdom, God. Even as you've given us the kingdom, you have given us gifts, the calling, and we want to thank you for that. And we pray, Father, that even as um, we uh, reflect and see and know what is the gifting and the calling that you have placed on our lives, what you have purposed for us, God, even before the foundations of the world, we pray that we would know, we would walk in it, that we will receive your anointing, God, that we will extend your kingdom here on earth in a mighty way, Father God, and that we would um, bring down your will as it is in heaven here on earth. And we pray that even as we study this course, that you would open our hearts and minds to receive, uh, to know, and God, to walk in our calling that you have placed in our lives. We thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, so in this course, we'll be studying about the ministry of the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher, okay? So uh, we'll also be talking about the fivefold ministry. What is the fivefold ministry? And where do we find it in the Bible? What is a fivefold ministry and where do we find it in the Bible? Don't look in your notes. <laughs> you can. Five different ways of ministry. Okay, what is the five different ways of ministry? It is a pastor, evangelist. Office, teachers, pastor, teacher, yes. evangelist. Great. Okay, where do we find this in the Bible? Huh? Corinthians? You can start with Acts. <laughs> Acts, Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, uh, Philemon, First Timothy, Second Timothy. <laughs> Where do we find it in the Bible? First Corinthians, chapter twelve. Okay, that's the gifts of the Spirit. <laughs> Ephesians, chapter four. Yes, Ephesians chapter four, verse eleven. So, all of you, please turn in your Bibles. Uh, to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. Can somebody read that loudly? You need to take the mic so that uh, online students can hear. Yeah. 
and he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers okay so here uh, in this course we are specifically discussing about the ministry of the pastor evangelist and the teacher now you might be thinking hey there is the fivefold ministry but why are we looking only at the three right why are we looking only at evangelist pastor and teacher what about the other two okay are they relevant they're not relevant uh, what are the other two that is left prophet and apostles okay so we will be studying that in the other courses but uh, we would also you would also be looking at the fivefold ministry but you would sp be specifically learning about these three the evangelist the pastor and the teacher okay um so we will talk about these three important ministry callings and also will be touching on the other gifts and the callings that are in the church as well okay so we'll begin by uh, looking at the introduction to the fivefold ministry that is your uh, first chapter now uh, the apostle paul talks about this in ephesians chapter 4 verses 7 through verse 16 okay ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 through verse 16 okay and uh, here in ephesians the book of ephesians or the paul's letter or epistle to the uh, of ephesians which church is he writing to the church at ephesus right and so is this a new church or is he going to you know establish a church or is the church already established and he's writing all this to them what is your idea sorry it's already established church in ephesus yes so why do you think paul is writing this why do you think paul is writing this why do you think he is writing to the church at ephesus when there's already overseers deacons leaders there are already established church why do you think he is writing about the fivefold ministry can you use the mic so there are many callings yeah you can the many callings but uh, it is jesus who administered uh, each one according to his will and his purpose for his okay. plans to be established okay there and, are many uh, callings mm, but it is jesus who gives um, specific people specific callings for the church what he has purpose what he has planned and neither one is above the other so okay, each one has one its okay the one is not above the other yeah, each one has its own significance and purpose great each one has its own significance and purpose anything else Why do you think he is writing to a church which is already established leadership there? Simple. Yes, there were divisions. There's no unity. Okay. There must have been a lot of confusion, right, about the leadership roles. Okay, there was no clarity. There was no order. So he's writing, even though there were deacons, there were leaders. and paul leaves who in in ephesus the city of ephesus who does he leave there to oversee the work he leaves young timothy okay and timothy uh, and ephesus was a very strategic place because not only the churches at ephesus but the the, the region surrounding ephesus you know you read the seven churches in the book of revelation the seven churches were also very close to the city of ephesus so uh, timothy's responsibility was also to oversee those seven churches that uh, you know is written as mentioned in the book of revelation so a lot of responsibility a lot of churches and in in paul's time how were the churches did they meet in buildings like we meet in buildings nowadays no there was uh, there were mainly home churches so they gathered in many home churches there were you know multiple churches that were there and there were a lot of leaders and deacons and overseers and there was a lot of confusion with the leadership okay and that is why paul is encouraging timothy when he writes first timothy and um, second timothy okay so with this background he's telling them that hey this is what the church is okay this is what 
God wants to establish in the church. He's establishing the fivefold ministry office in the church, and he's also elaborating what is the purpose or the reason or uh, the roles and responsibilities of these fivefold offices. And how do you know that you are supposed to be in this office? Okay, he very uh, beautifully says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. So who is this he himself? Did Paul say he himself is giving or Timothy himself is giving? Who is this he himself? Yes, it's Jesus himself. Because if you look at verse 11 of Ephesians uh, chapter 4, it's, it's a capital H and a capital H for he and a capital H for himself. So it is talking about Jesus, talking about God. Okay, so he's saying that within the church, there is something called the fivefold ministry and he is elaborating on who gives this whose calling it is and what uh, is the purpose of these fivefold ministry offices okay so let's read uh, ephesians chapter 4 verses 7 through verse 16 so can one of you please read ephesians chapter 4 uh, verses 7 through verse 16 you can take the mic can read it anyone but to each one But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ ap appropriated it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be pro apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole world, whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and the blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord that you must be no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. Amen. Thank you. So, um, um, Daniel Oliver asked this question why do we need the fivefold ministry? It's a good question to start off with, right? We're studying the fivefold ministry. Do we really need it in the church today? Yes. Okay. So, so some of you in the online students can also answer. Okay. Do we need the fivefold ministry? Yes. Why do we need it? And if, if all, all of them are teachers, who will preach? <laughs> for all our yeah. teachers, then who will preach. teach? Okay. So Lucy says yes. Okay. Why do we need the fivefold ministry? Was it only for the early church, not applicable for us? Why? Okay, each of them has different roles and responsibilities, yes. So we need, yes, we need apostles, pastors, teachers. Prophets, what else? Why do we need it? Sister, these are the different parts of Sorry, the can't church hear body. You. Can you speak again, please? 
Sister, these are the different uh, parts of the, our church body of Jesus Christ. And we need all of them to work together in one accord to promote the uh, body of Christ. All that we need. Yes, well said. Yes, uh, it's like different parts of the human body. And just like we cannot function without one part of the human body, the same way all of these um, callings or giftings that the Lord has given to the church is basically needed for the edification, for the growth, the enhancing, the furtherance of the church and the kingdom of God. Andrew says to equip the body of Christ. Yes. So uh, we need these fivefold ministries. Yes, Kofi. We can't hear you, Kofi. To equip the church. Sorry, can you say that again, please? To equip the church. Yes, to equip uh, the body of Christ, to equip the church. Yes, thank you. So, uh, like it's, uh, you know, uh, put here in verses 12 and 13, okay? Uh, also 14 and 15 and 16, it talks about, verse 16 talks about how the whole body is joined and knit together, okay? And, um, you know, by every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share and causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love, okay? So all of the fivefold ministry offices or the giftings is like, you can you can picture it like the you know the human body where everything works in perfect unity and oneness and we need all of these things and each of them have their different functions and their roles and responsibilities and it helps in the wholeness of the total functioning of the human body same way with the body of Christ and the body of Christ is called the it's called the church yes okay so um uh, here we see that, you know, um, uh, Apostle Paul is mentioning some important points which we will emphasize here in verse 11, says he, and he gave some to be apostles, okay? So Apostle Paul is basically stating very clearly that it is not our own calling. It's not something that we choose, but it is uh, who appoints all of these ministry offices. Yes, it's Jesus, it's God, okay, who appoints all of these ministry uh, offices. He appoints it in our life, okay, and God calls, Jesus calls some to be apostles, pastors, teachers. So the ministry gifts or the fivefold ministry gifts is a divine call, okay, that is very, very important, the basis. It's a divine call, okay. Daniel's question is, or uh, Abhishek's question is, can a person being called for all of these five ministries? What do you think? Can a person be called for all of these five ministries? Yes. Yes, can be called. Um, you know, they, uh, a pastor can also be a good teacher, can also be an apostle, can also be an evangelist, can also be a prophet, yes. Uh, so Daniel's question is, uh, why can't a single person have all the roles in ministry? Okay, a single person can have all the roles in ministry, but um, even as a single person can have each or function in each of these roles, but, you know, uh, the gift is given to a specific person, okay? So some of us who have the calling of a pastor, uh, not can uh, some of us who have a calling of a teacher not necessarily have a calling of a pastor okay so for example me I never had a calling of a pastor I have a specific calling of a teacher okay but I've been given the title of the pastor but it involves teaching but I that's why I'm not pastoring any church because I know very clearly that is not my calling that's not my gifting okay now um uh, so God calls each one of them and he gives them, uh, uh, gifting is unique for each person, okay? So a pastor can be, uh, um, for, if, I, if you put me as a pastor, I don't think I will do an excellent job pastoring in a 
church because I don't have the gifting and the calling. You put me as a teacher and I will do a good job at teaching, okay? Uh, you call me, you put me in a place of an apostle, I won't. Even the uh, calling to the prophet, uh, to the office of a prophet is something that is a very unique, distinct calling, okay? All of us, yes, can prophesy, uh, prophesy. Why can we all prophesy? Yes, you have the gift. How do you know you have the gift? Yes, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you receive the gift of prophecy, one of the nine gifts, right? But that is a gifting, but that is not the office that you are being called to. So here, when you're talking about the fivefold ministry, it's basically the office that you have been called to, okay? A specific office. Yes, you can flow and all of those things, but you are not majorly uh, in, in sun. So for example, like a doctor, okay, uh, you, you study f uh, four or five years of medicine, but then you can, you know, you can uh, focus in on being an orthopedic um, uh, doctor, or you can, you know, a, a doctor for, uh, 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 you know, end endocrinology or uh, for eyes or whatever. So you specific, uh, you know, specific area that you are focusing in on your studying in. So if you go to a general practitioner, when you have uh, some sickness, they'll say you have to go to an endocrinologist or you'll have to go to an ophthalmologist or you'll have to go to, you know, an orthopedic because you have a fracture and I can't uh, son, go to an orthopedic doctor. Okay. So specific areas in the same way with the church. Okay. Yes, we can flow in all of these things, but this is a specific ministry office that you are called to. So if you uh, take your car to the doctor, and ask him to fix your car, will he do that? No, he's not a mechanic. He will know something about the car, some basic things like all of us would know who love cars, but he will not be able to help you. Now you go to a mechanic and ask him to fix your body, will he, will he be able to do that? No, because he's not a doctor, right? In the same way, he, he will know some things. If you say, hey, I'm having a headache, he'll say, okay, take this medicine. Or if you're having fever, say, take Dolo or, you know, paracetamol, basic things. But, you know, he will not be able to uh, examine and tell you what is the real problem or the sickness that you're having and the, uh, you know, the, the further medical procedures that you have to go into. That only a doctor will know. So you can flow in all of these, but, you know, you're specifically called to one ministry office. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Okay, so we'll move on. Um, so it says that, you know, um, so it, uh, the calling to be in one of these fivefold ministry offices is not your own calling. Okay, it's something that we don't get to choose, but it's God who appoints us. Okay, it's God who places this in our life. So it's God who calls us to one of these ministry offices. So it's a divine call. Okay. So some of you might think that, you know, hey, I love to travel. I love to share the gospel. You put me with anybody, I'll share the gospel with them. So that means I'm an evangelist. Okay. Or some of you can say, hey, I enjoy preaching. You know, I have the gift of speaking. You put me in front of the mic, I can speak from Genesis to Revelation. I can preach from Genesis to Revelation. So you say, hey, I'm a good speaker. So that means, you know, I can become a pastor or it automatically makes me a pastor. Or someone can simply decide and say, hey, you know, because I desire the title of apostle, I like to be called as Apostle Selena Makwana, you know. So all of these are assumptions and these miss out, you know, when you have these assumptions, it misses out on the essential truth that these ministry gifts are divine callings. It's not your own personal choice. It's not your ambitions. It not, it's not what you like to do. It's God's calling on your life. Okay. Now in today's world, it's easy to see how people might be, you know, very drawn or not even today's world, even if you look at in the past, how people are drawn to these roles with the wrong reason. Okay. Because these roles have a lot of visibility. They give you a, a lot of visibility, uh, influence that always uh, often accompanies these roles of an evangelist, pastor, teacher, uh, and it can make this appear very, very attractive uh, to those who are seeking, you know, recognition or those who are seeking a platform. So some of them even say, you know, I'm apostle so-and-so, I'm prophet so-and-so, 
you know, I'm pastor so and so. So if you look at their letters or, you know, their letter heads, you know, apostle, or, you know, you put their name titles, you know, apostle so and so. Hey, do you really have been called to this office is another question. Or you are there because you feel or you sense or you like that post to the title and you are looking for recognition and um, a platform where you can be recognized and, you know, um, being portrayed. So some might believe that, you know, it's their natural talents that brings them into this office or this calling. Or some of them think it's just their personal passions. Okay. Um, or some of them feel that they need to step into the roles because of uh, the talents, their desire, or the charisma that they have to teach and preach. But none of these, okay, let me tell you very clearly, it's not your charisma, it's not your talents, it's not your desires, it's not what you feel and you think uh, can substitute the true calling that God has on your life. So not, none of these things can substitute or can say that, hey, you are in this ministry office. It's basically a calling of God. Okay. So the key point here is that ministry is not these fivefold ministry offices is not about self-selection you are selecting yourself. It's not about your personal preferences. It's about God's appointment. It's God calling you. It's God appointing you. Okay. So if it got, if it's God who calls, he also equips each individual for that specific role for his kingdom ensures. And he ensures that, you know, you are uniquely prepared to fulfill the purpose he has set for you. Okay. Amen. Okay, now how do we recognize this? How do we recognize this? Through prayer, okay? Prompting of the Holy Spirit. We recognize this over time, okay? For some of us, it can take years. For some of us, we know it, you know, in our teenage years, in our very early years of our life, uh, you just know it, you just sense it, okay? Uh, for example, Pastor Ashish, okay? Um, no, when maybe he was 13 or 14 years old, he knew that he wanted to just go out and preach and teach the gospel. Okay. He says that he was so excited. Uh, I think we learned this in fulfilling God's purpose, uh, receiving God's guidance. We read about his, uh, his uh, you know, uh, uh, testimony that he puts there. He says he was so excited for God. He wanted to go everywhere like an evangelist and preach and teach God's word. And then his father wanted him to get further learning, but he just wanted to go and preach and teach the world, okay? A, 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 preach and teach the gospel to the world. And so he takes him to two pastors who put some sense, and then he realizes. And then, of course, he gets his degree and everything. But he knew in his heart that whatever, whether he's an engineer or not, that he is called to be a pastor, right? And you see him coming back and setting the church, and, you know, he's flourishing in his role as a pastor, as a teacher. Uh, why? Because he's, he knew, he knows that this is his role, okay, and this is God's calling upon his life. You know, he has, he's preparing himself, he's prepared himself, and he is walking in that calling, in that gifting, and there's the anointing of God on his life, and we can see that very evident, very clear, and he's just flowing in the anointing and the power of God, and he's extending God's kingdom okay now for some of us it can take many years okay for if you look at pastor paul's um, example of his life pastor paul emmanuel you know um he's uh you know he was uh he, he he actually questioned himself like who who he is who am i right you know he is good at worship he loves evangelism. He likes to share the gospel with people, uh, specific, uh, especially with, uh, you know, uh, non-Christian uh, uh, people. And also he's a, a pastor. So he asks himself, you know, who am I? So he, he, he knows who he basically is. And he, it took like, he says, five years to recognize his calling. So when he comes back and takes class, you can ask him what is the specific office that he senses he's called to. Okay, but I'll speak for myself. You know, um, I never thought I will be in full time ministry. Um, I always wanted to do something very, very professional and uh, was very professional minded, loved science, wanted to do something in science. And when I was doing my 12th standard and I was praying, and God called me into full time ministry. 
Okay, so for one one week, I, I, I shared this when I was teaching, uh, you know, uh, Minister's Foundation. For one week, I basically was, you know, uh, battling with God, you know, we were going back and forth. I said, God, I'll do something professional, but I will also teach and, you know, share the gospel. Like I was in 12th grade, but I'd already started teaching in uh, Sunday school. Okay, I'll do that, God, but I want to do something professional. And, um, you know, God knows you know, what he has called us for, what he has destined us. And so for one week, I felt like I was arguing with God and we were going back and forth. At the end of the one week, I just wanted to end it. So for, for that, I simply said, okay, God, I'll come into full-time ministry. But that there was not a deep commitment and I knew I was not getting there. But after 12th grade, I was not getting into, when my results came out, I was not getting into any college and then I remember going before God and crying and saying God one year is going to be wasted because I applied only in one college I was so confident I'll get there because my sister was already studying in that college and she's a topper and everyone knew her from the principal to all the faculty and so they, they I will also get in there and the three lists came out and nothing worked my father tried to pull his strings nothing happened my sister went to the principal and spoke he said sorry all those were shut and I was not getting anywhere you know no colleges and I said God you know wasting one year sitting at home is like really tormenting what, what are you doing and that's when God reminded me he said remember I called you into full-time ministry and you said yes and I was so shocked because I had completely forgotten that was not my agenda that was not my priority so it was not on top of my mind and then I realized I better do of course you know we didn't have that much of training and all like you all have, you all are so much more privileged. You know, uh, I uh, I just thought better do what God wants me to do instead of suffering and, you know, going through all these hardships. I said, okay, God. And I went to Bible college and I didn't know there was this fivefold ministry. I We only knew that when we go into Bible college, you'll become a pastor, okay? Because we've seen only pastors, right? And teachers. But thank God that was not stuck in my mind that I'm going to be a pastor. I went not knowing which office or what I'm going to be doing, okay? Um, and I will continue with my testimony after we look at some points here. I'll come back to that. Okay, I'll stop that there, but then I'll continue. So we see that the ministry gift is a divine call, and God will orchestrate things as long as we are doing what he has called us to or what he wants us to do, okay? So the ministry gift that God gives us is inside the person is is resident within that person just like you know when we are baptized in the holy spirit what happens when we are baptized in the holy spirit what do we receive yeah the nine gifts of the holy spirit okay so you might be flowing or exercising all the nine gifts or you might not be flowing or exercising any of those nine gifts okay but those gifts are still inside you it's lying dormant because you're not stirring it up. You're not using it, okay, for whatever reasons that may be, okay? But, you know, you have received those gifts and those gifts are inside you. So the ministry gifts also is, you know, what God has called you, what he's put in your life is also there in your lives, okay? And like we studied in the minister's foundation, you know, in fulfilling God's purpose and receiving God's guidance for your life, we studied that the gift, Thing, the gifts and the callings always go together. Okay, your gifting and your calling always goes together. It's like a railway track. You know, the, the, the train runs when the railway track, both the tracks are in parallel order. The same way, the gifting and the calling always go together. So the ministry gift is always there inside us because God has put it inside us okay now for example god has appointed you to be a worship leader okay just for example okay now when god has appointed you to be a worship leader he will put those gifts and talents inside you so what are the gifts and talents you need to have to be to be a worship leader huh heart to worship okay what are the basic gifts talents yes the skill of playing instruments okay Yes, you have to sing well, right? <laughs> you have to sing well. You need to know the chords. You Okay, you go to the next step you level. You learn the chords. You learn the different, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, whether you're an alto, soprano, you know, how to move things, uh, read the notes, 
and all of those things, when to pause, how when to transition, all of those things you learn. But when do you learn that? When you like, you know, when you're six years, seven years, nine years, or ten years old, you know, hey, I have a liking. You know, I have a desire to worship, or I have a desire to sing, or a desire to, uh, you know, to uh, play an instrument. And then you you learn that instrument, and then you uh, you you suddenly don't realize I'm called to be a worship leader, but you you know slowly learn. Uh, you improve, improvise on your skill or your talent of playing an instrument, of singing, of joining a choir, of learning the notes, of learning how to sing. Okay, and then you come to a place and say, "Hey, you know, I think I like to be a worship leader, or I have that calling, or I have the desire, or I have an interest." So you don't have become a worship leader all of a sudden, right? There's a training, there's a process that. That happens right from childhood. You learn everything and then you come to that place. And even when you are a worship leader, you learn how to lead. You listen to other worship leaders. You see things. You learn things. Now, what about pastor? You sense that, hey, I have this, feel the sense of calling to be a pastor. What do you do? You suddenly become a pastor one fine day? No, what do you do? Yes, you go to a course, you join a theological college, you learn about the Bible, you study the Bible, you spend time in prayer, you know, you uh, listen to sermons, you listen to other men and women of God, you read books, you learn the doctrines, you prepare yourself. There's so much that you need to do to prepare your... Sorry. Yes, you need, you do so much to uh, prepare your... Uh, self okay so you know that when you are preparing yourself god empowers you to be anointed of god and there are also practical things that you uh, do okay so all of these things you do you prepare yourself and god also when you recognize things when you he orchestrate things he open doors and he prepares you for your calling or your ministry office now how do we know that this Ministry office is resident inside house. How do you know that? Yes, you just sense it like the Holy Spirit prompts you, stirs your heart up, you know. The fruits of it, okay, you see the fruits of it, yes. Uh, and what do you do? You, you start working on it, you exercise it, right? You walk in it, okay. And what happens when you exercise and you walk in it? The anointing of God comes upon you and you begin to use that gift in a very very powerful way okay like pastor ashish when he was very young he knew that he wanted to be a pastor he right away doesn't go and start a church and becomes a pastor right he he works on the other pastors he learns he reads books he he, he uh, equips himself uh, in reading god's word and all of those things and when the right time comes he prepares himself to be the pastor okay so it's important that we know that the gift is resident inside us but uh, you know um, we must also understand what is that gift okay what is that gift and uh, calling so you might say hey i don't know if i'm called to be a worship leader a pastor an apostle a prophet a teacher you know or god is calling me to start a business i don't know what i am called to do so one way you know what you're called to do is look at what is your gifting or your talent that God has placed in your life, okay? And we learned about this in uh, the Minister's Foundation, okay? So we will, um, uh, you know, we'll talk about this more later, but we look that, uh, uh, that the ministry gifts, you know, can also be expanded into different kinds of other gifts. For example, you know, um, gifts of healing, you know, there might be people, uh, uh, the gifting for, uh, uh, you know, with art and craft, with dance and choreography. There's so many various areas of gifting that God can give us the talents and gifting and he can use us in those various giftings. But for now, we are just focusing on these three callings and gifting. So there are different kinds of gifts, but the point is that we need to step into our calling. We need to step into our gifting okay now for example you have a nice pair of shoes an expensive pair of shoes whether it's adidas or nike or puma you have a, a great pair of shoes now how can that shoes be beneficial to you huh? how can that shoes be beneficial to you 
Yeah, you have to wear it, you have to walk in it, and you have to use it. And you know that these are good shoes and it has a good future. You know, it uh, long longevity is good and you can use it for many years. But the point is what? That you need to use it. You have to walk in it, okay? So the same way with our giftings and our callings. You need to use it, you need to walk in it, and then you will see God opening doors, orchestrating things for your life, and the empowering coming, and the anointing coming. It's also like a puzzle, right? You have all the pieces over there, and what happens? You can't just say, hey, this is a mess, right? Hey, that is what a puzzle is, right? It's like a mess first, but you have to put the puzzle pieces together. There's somewhere that you need to start, right? So, um, when you start, when you take that first step, God will open doors, he will orchestrate things, or, uh, uh, opportunities, and he will um, lead you, okay? So uh, Abhishek says in Acts, 7, uh, Acts chapter 7, uh, chosen people to serve. Nowadays, we have media, sound, set up, backstage teams because of the interest. Can a person's calling and interest be different? If it is, how can he or she can identify their calling? Yes. The callings can be different. God can uh, manifest his anointing, his, uh, his power through dance, choreography, art and craft, even through baking and cooking. You know, you just uh, bake and cook and, you know, you give it to somebody, you speak life into that and, you know, you prophesy over that, you give it to them. They're not just eating it, but, you know, they, you're bringing them into their divine uh, destinies. How do you identify the calling? How do they identify their calling, whether it's media, sound, setup, backstage teams? How do you identify your calling? How do you identify your calling? I just uh, was talking about it. Yes, it's your gift, right? Your gift, your talent. How do you know your calling is basically to see your gifting, where you are gifted at. So coming back to my uh, uh, life testimony, so how did I know where God is calling me to? I knew specifically I'm not going to be a pastor, not an apostle, not a prophet. Okay, apostle prophet didn't come to my mind because I told you I didn't know the fivefold office. Okay, but I thought I, I knew I won't be a, a pastor. I actually, when I was in Bible college, I liked uh, counseling. So I was interested in counseling. Um, and, um, you know, during my uh, our six months of internship, in, a, in our third year, we go for six months of internship. Then we come back to the college and study for uh, three, four months. And then we graduate from, uh, you know, the, the third year and move on to our fourth year. So that I chose uh, counseling. I went to Kolkata and I was uh, counseling drug addicts and alcoholics okay that was my area of interest and even when i wrote my thesis in my fourth year it was all about you know um uh, counseling drug addicts and alcoholics but i did not know that god is calling me specifically into the uh, anointing and anointed me specifically for teaching children okay so in my bible college when i was there you know uh, in the we had weekend ministry so we were posted in different churches and you know i was automatically put into sunday school i don't know why because maybe if it's a lady they put them automatically into sunday school maybe but also you know um, we had a weekend ministry on campus and i was assigned to teaching uh, our campus children. So we had online staff, I mean, we had our uh, staff, our uh, faculty, our administrators, all those in the office, and uh, sing, uh, you know, uh, married students with their children. So we had our uh, uh, children's church happening on Fridays, and I was teaching there. And also God opened doors for me to go to school. So during the week, you know, one week, I, uh, one day in a week, I was going to schools and ministering to uh, children. So God was actually opening doors, which I never sensed. But then after I finished my fourth year, I was wanting to go back to, um, you know, uh, Kolkata and uh, do uh, ministry among drug addicts and alcoholics because we did not have, um, uh, uh, you know, an in-house uh, occupancy for women. So if there was any hardcore addicts, uh, mainliner addicts, we were they were put with, you know, uh, with the male addicts in the same house. And you know how, you know, emotionally distressing it is when women are put with men and they are all going through difficult challenges. So I wanted to go and start a, a women's wing of, of for addicts. But you know, when I went there, the 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 
uh, CEO of that company, he looked at me and he said, I think, Serena, you're very tired. You have to go back home, just rest, uh, take three months off, pray about it. And then if you sense God calling you, come back. But I never went back because, you know, God had a different plan and a purpose. And looking back, I see how God orchestrated things and he brought me into uh, children's ministry, specifically among schools. And I'm so grateful because God even opened the doors in a uh, Bible college. So, um, you know, I was uh, ministering with Youth for Christ with youth and I knew I didn't fit in there. And then I joined a, a, a family ministry and I was running their programs. But one day my boss looks at me and says, hey, you're good with children. Why don't you start a project for uh, children in schools? And that's how it all started. So I was, you know, willing to you know, go, uh, do what God has called me to do, but I did not know where any area. But, you know, this uh, this whole uh, liking for children, I love children, okay? So when I was in 12th grade, I was also teaching in uh, Sunday school. And if any child was missing in our church, they would say, look for Selena and you will find that child because the child will be with her because that's how, how much I love children. So you see, and uh, I, I also as a young person, you know, I would prepare for VBS. I would plan VBS to teach my own sisters. I would run VBS at home for my sisters. You know, that was my whole interest. So that was my gifting. That was my area of interest. And you see how God beautifully orchestrated things for me. And I know I'm in the right place doing what he wants me to do. Because, you know, when I was in, um, in Bible college, we had no children's ministry. Okay, we had no teaching on children's ministry, children's ministry, we had only scripture union, and that books were very outdated, you know, when I was in grade one, what children in grade 10 were studying, when I came to grade 10, it was the same book, you know, it was just one, so there was no teaching, nothing, but when I see when God brought me into children's ministry, the creativity, the, the doors, the way he's taught me, the way he's enhanced things for me, it's just, I know it is God, it is just an heavenly download. OK, so what I'm trying to say is when you know your gifting and calling and you are there in the right place and you are doing what God has called you to do, he empowers you. He gives you the grace. He gives you the skills. He opens the, opens the door. He orchestrates those. Even when doors are shut, he opens those for you. So I'll just end by saying this, that, you know, when I was working in that previous place, when the you know, my boss told me, why don't you start a ministry for children? And I worked hard for five years, started a ministry for uh, school children, named it, wrote the curriculum. And then, you know, um, uh, he wanted me to go and start this in Mumbai. And somehow I was not willing to go. So he said, you have to leave. And that broke my heart because this was like something my baby, I had started, you know, this project and I written the curriculum, was running with it. I was so passionate about it. And he says, you have to leave. So, you know, I didn't fight that. I didn't battle that. I knew that, you know, when you know, God will open the doors, I just left. Okay. And um, uh, uh, I remember I left in April, May, I just rested. And June, when school started, it really broke my heart because I was saying, God, you know, I want to... I have to be in schools now, ministering to children, and I'm at home. I don't have a job. And then God is telling me, apply to all people's church. And I was like, you know, I went to the website, looked at, there was no uh, postings for children's ministry. And God is saying, apply. And I'm saying, like, God, there's no posting for children's ministry. How do I apply? He's saying, just apply. So I just obey and apply. And they called me for an interview. And I'm telling God, you know, I'm the first fool going for, uh, you know, a, 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 an interview. And they asked me, which post you have sent? And I said, I don't fit in any of those posts. Because I have to be honest, right? I don't fit in any of the posts that is in the online thing. And they'll say, they laugh at me, God. God is saying, go for the interview. I went. I was all the way scared when they'll ask me for which post you have. You know, uh, uh, you know, you have, uh, uh, you know, put in your resume. And, you know, amazing thing, they never asked me that. Pastor just says, there's an opening for school's ministry. Will you take it up? I was so shocked. I did not answer him. I was just shocked. I just looked at his face and he said, there's an opening for children's ministry, Serena. Will you take it up? And I'm still looking at him because I'm totally dazed. I'm so shocked. And then he said, will you take it up? And then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, pastor. You know, because and the way back home, I was crying all the way because God knows your heart. He knows the desire. I mean, he knows the calling that he's you put you in and he knows that you are following that direction. He just orchestrate things and he just opens doors. So what we need to know is to sense our calling, our know our calling, pray, work, 
and you know flow in that walk in it and god will you know do the rest he will open the doors and he will orchestrate things he will give you the strategies the creativity everything that needs for you to you know function so beautifully and extend his kingdom okay okay any questions the bell is already gone there are some good questions from the online students thank you anyone else has any questions yes uh, uh one thing i'm clear in mind is that all of us are called to share the gospel yes but to all believers have some part of it in the fivefold ministry or uh, not everyone are called to the fivefold ministry um, uh, th there is you know there is three giftings uh, fivefold ministry office there is the membership gifts like you know administrator and uh, you know uh, you know the others you know uh, in church serving and all of those things like um, and then there is the um, uh, the gifts of the spirit so three giftings the gift of the spirit everyone receives the holy spirit gives us the fivefold ministry office is specifically given by jesus to specific individuals the membership gifts is also given to all of us in the church for the edification and the building up and the functioning of the church yes yes that is uh, we are all called that is our mandate that is our command yes that is a commission go preach and teach and baptize in the name of the father son and the holy spirit yes okay thank you everyone thank you so much i'll see you all uh, for the next class yes